Hey guys, it's Tish from the Install Bay. We're going to take a look at Focal's Universal ISS 690 6x9 inch component speakers. Stay tuned. Alright, so inside of each box comes the two 6x9 inch mid bass. It comes with two tweeters. Each tweeter also comes with a flush mount kit, as well as if you need to do a surface angle mount. There's also a quarter, two quarter inch spacers for the 6x9s. And then for crossovers, instead of giving you the big crossover networks, they've actually split it into the raw components and put them in the heat shrink like this. So you have two mid-range crossovers here, as well as two tweeter crossovers here. This way it'll make mounting these speakers a lot easier, hence the universal name. So if you have to mount the tweeter up in an A-pillar and this goes in the door, you don't have to worry about running any additional wiring. Okay, so the car we're going to work on today is this Ford F-150. The Ford F-150 has a 6x9 located here, as well as a tweeter located up in the A-pillar here. So we're going to go ahead and get the doors off take a look at it and figure out how we're going to mount it as well as get the A-pillar off to figure out how we're going to mount the tweeter. So this is the factory Ford speaker. As you can see, it's a 6x9 here, but then the shape is quite odd. It's made out of plastic, small magnet. Um, so we need to mount our new 6x9 in the same location. Metra makes this here, which is a fitment bezel. These are the 8250606s. And what these are designed to do is mimic the factory speaker. They use the same screw mounts, they have the same basic depth and shape of the factory. So that'll allow us to now mount our Focal into the same spot. A couple things to note when looking at the factory speaker, if you notice it has foam on the back here as well as foam on the front. This is the one thing that Focal does not include in their package, is any form of foam for the front. They do give you two of these, which are for the back of the speaker, so that you can set it on here like this, put your speaker through, and then use that to mount the speaker so that you have a foam barrier between this metal and this plastic. For the back, however, we'll be using this stuff here. This is foam that we pick up off of Amazon for this specific purpose. We'll put a link into the show notes if you'd like to pick some of this up for yourself. So for this install, we're also going to add some roadkill onto the inside of this door, mainly in this area right here where the speaker's going to sit, as well as to the outside here, just to strengthen it up a little bit. There's a hole down here for the wire to run through, so you want to make sure you get that correct. Okay, so this is the crossover pigtail. Uh, I don't particularly like mounting these things inside the door skin where it could possibly get moisture on it. So we want to mount it on the outside uh, between the door panel and the metal itself, not on the inside. So we're going to lengthen these guys here, make them a little bit longer.
Sewing seam ripper is great for cutting this Tessa tape stuff from the factory. Little tip. So one of the things that Focal doesn't include in the box is a piece of foam for the exterior here. Now you could use something like Fast Rings, which we'll put a link to in the show notes to their website if you want to pick those up, or some thin weather stripping would also work. So we're done with this. We're gonna go ahead and put the door panel back on, start on the A-pillar. So we have the driver's side A-pillar here. Here's a little factory tweeter goes. Uh, it's got a two screw mount, so let's go ahead and get it out. So this is the factory tweeter we have to contend with, and this is the Focal tweeter we wanna replace it with. So let's go ahead and get this tweeter out of the mount and see what it looks like. Okay, the mount is actually part of the tweeter, so we're gonna have to fabricate a new mount. put some black paint on it just so you can't see it through the grill. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and snap this in place. Now we also are gonna put some foam on the front of the tweeter so that it'll force all the sound through. There again, you can just use some weather stripping to, to accomplish this. Okay, so when you pull the tweeter crossover out of the box, you're gonna notice that there's three wires on this end. Basically one says car, one says display, and then one is just a ground. My guess, because the instructions really don't elaborate on it, is that this is some kind of an attenuation for a display, uh, and then this is for car because it's gonna be, uh, needs to be a little bit louder because of all the material in the car, and they don't want it to sound shrilly on a display, so they attenuate it down. So we'll just go ahead and we'll cap that off so that it doesn't get in the way or short anything out. Now we're gonna go ahead and we have these two connectors here. We're gonna cut these off and solder them together. All right, let's take it into the car. All right guys, normally we like to try to let you listen to the car when we're done with it, uh, through this crappy speakers called YouTube. Um, we had to get the car out of here, we were kind of pressed for time, uh, sorry about that. But we hope you enjoyed nonetheless us putting the speakers in. They sounded amazing. The mid bass coming out of them was stellar, the tweeters were point. Uh, you're gonna have to take my word for it, I guess. All right, that brings this one to a close. As always, we do these things five days a week now non-stop action and adventure so please subscribe thumbs up and all that other youtube friendly things you guys can find us on facebook instagram and of course right here always on youtube you guys have a great night and we will see you when dude you left me hanging for no thanks <laughs> <laughs> all right guys see you later bye